Alexander Vindman is a retired United States Army Lieutenant Colonel who serves as the Director for European Affairs, the U.S. National Security Council. Michael Newton is a professor at Vanderbilt University Law School. He served as Senior Advisor of the State Department, Ambassador at Large for War Crimes Issues, and they both join me now. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, let me, let me ask you uh, first uh, about your reaction to this. Again, there's a pattern here. There's a, there's a history here. It is nonetheless... Those images as they came out of Bucha on Saturday, I think you felt this way, and everyone, horrifying and shocking. It, it, it is absolutely horrifying. Um, and this is why there was, it should have been such a, a, a greater press to try to see if we could first avoid this war, because we knew the level of barbarism that Putin and his regime would, would apply to uh, Ukraine. And now, everything we can to help Ukraine end this war. This war is likely to play out over the course of months. What we saw in Bucha and Irpin and other locations, uh, we forgot about Mariupol and the uh, bombing of the maternity ward earlier on in the war. These are things that are going to unfold and they're going to increase as Russia gets uh, frustrated. Mariupol still is uh, held out for six weeks, but it's going to get pressed with considerably more combat power. And right now, uh, the president has said the exact right thing. We need to give Ukraine everything we need, they need rather, to, to win this war, but that's not happening. Otherwise, we will have many more of these types of catastrophic events. And eventually, the, the American public and the rest of the Western world is gonna get fed up. And that's gonna drive a, a probably of an overreaction. So uh, this is all foreseeable and we should take action to avoid this from becoming a protracted war with more of these types of incidents. I want to uh, uh, read a little bit, M Michael, of, of some of the New York Times reporting on this. And again, there's, you know, when you first see these images, I think it's it's a good idea to sort of take things slowly, a grain of salt. There is fog of war and, 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 and evaluate. But we've now had multiple time for reporters, human rights observers to come in and, and getting more and more confirmation. This is the Times reporting. 13 of the bodies were men whose hands have been tied and have been shot at close range in the head. A coroner said he did not know the circumstances of their death, but believed, based on their apparently recent deaths, they were prisoners killed before the Russian army withdrew. They were civilians, he said, showing cell phone pictures of dead men in civilian clothes with their hands bound behind their backs and one case in the front. You know, the term war crimes, I think, has a rhetorical meaning and then it has a technical international legal meaning. What do you, as someone who works in this space, what is your reaction to that term in application to what we are seeing and seeing reported in the streets of Bucha? Well, if one accepts the prevailing narrative, which is that Vladimir Putin launched this illegal war of aggression as a way of uh, aggrandizing Russian power and Russian prestige and rebuilding a Russian empire, et cetera, there's hardly anything more corrosive to that. You know, as a, as a, as a political term, it's incredibly powerful and has the opportunity to galvanize the entire world, as we're beginning to see. But as a legal term and as a prosecutor myself, I mean, I think it's very important that we develop the body of evidence. And when the Russians begin to lie, as they already are doing, we present them in evidence. We be transparent and we say, if you want to apologize, apologize. Uh, but come negotiate, look at the evidence with us, and we will prove to the entire world beyond a reasonable doubt that these are war crimes, or in some cases, crimes against humanity. There's no question of that. Now the real question is, which individuals, both political or military, bear individual criminal responsibility for these kinds of offenses. That's the real challenge lying ahead. Yeah, just to follow up on that, we should be clear. I mean, these were these were acts that were committed by actual individuals, by Russian soldiers, under the uh, command of Russian officers, under the command of, uh, of the general uh, who, who's commanding the Russian army. I mean, how important is building that body of evidence? Well, it's vitally important. And I've been working for a long time with, with courageous Ukrainian human rights defenders on the ground. This is not new. Uh, Russians have been violating the law of occupation for a long time in Crimea and other parts of Ukraine. And now you're just seeing, I liked your word, the brutality of what they really do on the ground. Uh, but that's a far cry from building a, a cohesive criminal case, uh, and which is a composite. That's, this is the common heritage of mankind, and we have to work together with all countries, with all comers, to develop a comprehensive uh, body of evidence that can be used in any court in the world. That's why it's important to remember, you know, of course, you've got the International Criminal Court, but you also have domestic courts all around the world that have jurisdiction, and first and foremost, the courts of Ukraine that have jurisdiction. Yeah. We have to have a composite body of evidence that can be used in any court anywhere in the world 
that wants to prosecute a particular offender and can get personal jurisdiction over them. You know, there's something very sick uh, and, 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 and so darkly cynical and nih almost nihilistic to me, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, ab about this as propaganda. I mean, obviously, if you're the Russian forces, you know if you're leaving bodies in the streets. You know if you're, you're retreating with people's hands bound and, and bullets in the back of their head. So to do that is to leave a message, is to, is, to, is to make a statement, and then to immediately deny it. I mean, you could not do that, or you could do it and say, yes, you know, behold our wrath and cower before us. But this combination of leaving it out for, for it to be found and immediately denying it, which is a sort of common trope here, is, is, is pretty enraging. And, I, and on the public opinion front, I think is gonna ex increase the pressure across Europe to cut off oil and gas, which is precisely what you heard from that Ukrainian member of parliament. I think that's right, but it shows a general kind of callousness for human life. The repression of uh, 20 years, increasing repression of 22 years of a Putin rule has bred this kind of uh, mentality into the population. It's a callousness that throws and spends tens of thousands of uh, Russian soldiers uh, for, for no gain, uh, just to w withdraw and reform for another uh, offensive. Uh, and it's something, if certainly they're, they're callous with their soldiers' lives, they're going to be callous with the civilians' lives. So it's, it's something that's uh, it's a rot within the authoritarian world, within the authoritarian regime, within Russia, that is indicative of uh, really a, a broader struggle between good and evil. And I, I'm not sure if there was uh, forethought and signaling in terms of leaving the bodies out. Uh, they left under pressure to a certain extent. Uh, right. I think it was just a general callousness, for one thing. Mm. And certainly there, were leadership, there was leadership involved. The mass graves require engineers. Uh, engineer assets are higher level assets, either at a battalion or a brigade level. So they're ready at that level. You have kind of se a mid to senior level officers involved. And these things are, are occurring kind of not just in one location, but throughout the country. So certainly there's an underwriting um, of, of this kind of uh, warfare. For Russia, it's within their, their concept of warfare. A end the war as quickly as possible, using every means possible, including, including, including brutality, because from their perspective, that is somehow yeah. humane. It's a foreign concept to us.